Welcome to DC Today, this Thursday, March the 7th. And great to be back here with you here again today from Newport Beach, California. And nice update in markets today. We had an update slightly yesterday, but a little more conviction today. We closed up about 130 points on the Dow. The S&P was up 1%, a little over 1%, and notched a new um, all-time high, closed at 5157. So again, from remembering back when it was six in the 600s, uh, it, it's surreal to see where it is. Um, 10 year was down just a basis point on the day. We closed at 409 on 10s. And global yields, by the way, and basically the top, let's call it 30 countries, are all trending lower. Japan is a little bit of an outlier, but more or less rates are moving, moving lower as inflation is abating basically globally because of uh, supply chain easing and all of that. But on the day, Powell finished his second day of testimony to Congress. More of the same there, not necessarily market moving. Um, Christine Lagarde in Europe, who runs the ECB, the European Central Bank, kept rates the same at 4%. Although she did tilt her had a little bit more towards inflation, moving back towards the number that they need to see in order to cut rates. And my comment was more around you know, they've said June is the date that they think they're going to do that. Um, you know, UK and ECB, they do tend to follow the US. There's a lot of reasons for that. But the growth paradigm in Europe is just much different than the US. We're looking at two to two and a half percent GDP growth for 2024 here and something like a tenth of that <laughs> in the biggest economy in Europe, which is Germany, at about a quarter of a percent. So whether they can wait till June before they, they need to cut rates or not is we'll see. Um, uh, I'm less convinced that they'll be able to, but again, it's three months from now. So um, all that to say, um, the uh, and, and, and I guess my comment was, you know, it's, it's just our theme of this Japanification, which is higher debt levels lead to lower growth because of interest expense and, and borrowing growth from the future till today lead to lower rates, leads to higher debt, leads to lower growth, kind of that rinse, wash, and repeat paradigm. Tonight we have State of the Union. David had a little note in there on on his love for writing about politics. Uh, That's a joke. But I do know he loves politics. Um, I think the the part that he might not love is just the craziness of the back and forth on political agendas and and all of that and different things in, in political world. But uh, we'll see what uh, the president has to say this afternoon or this evening, really. And then um, uh, we had um, jobless claims today were right in line. We were expecting 217. We got 217. And really, we've been hovering around this low 200s level for several months. So, you know, the Fed mentioned in their beige book that they were uh, making more progress on an easing employment picture. And that was a good thing. Uh, We need to see that because the Fed's mandate is, of course, price stability and full employment. And if they feel like employment is normalizing, that gives them a little bit more uh, ability to go ahead and lower interest rates from the highly restrictive level that they currently are at. Um, Trade for the month was, um, the trade deficit, I should say, was up uh, 5%, a little over 5% on the month, which was more than expected. We're running basically a $67.4 billion dollar trade deficit here for the month of February. So it's substantial. One of the reasons, and I mentioned this, maybe it was last week, I think, was the dollar versus other major currencies in the world is trading significantly higher. It's actually started to roll a bit here. And I think some of that is due to expectations that interest rates will actually start to go lower. But, you know, again, if the rest of the world is going to do the same thing, you know, on a relative basis, we'll see what really matters for currencies, which is the fundamentals. And of course, the fundamentals in the US versus most of the rest of the world, China, Japan, and Europe are much stronger. Um, so I'm, I'm assuming the dollar will weaken a bit, but I don't know that it's back to where it was several years ago or anything like that. So again, that trade deficit matters. The stronger dollar that we have, the more things we can buy overseas for cheaper and uh, you know, short term, the less that we tend to export uh, across the world as it's more expensive for others. Productivity uh, for Q4 was up a little more than expected at 3.2, which is good. Um, I think the notable piece of that was the labor input cost of that was up much less than expected. It was 0.4 and the number was expected to be 1.2. So again, some of these input 
price pressures for inflation coming lower basically across the board is what I paid attention to more on the productivity report for the day. Um, there was a question in Ask Brian, pretty simple one. It did come in, the real question this morning um, about, you know, someone that has risk tolerance, what are some of the things that we use in portfolios for them? He's recently retired. It's a general question. I mean, I, I, uh, I need to know more about the person that's asking the question first before I can give a specific answer, of course. But, um, you know, generally speaking, if someone that is risk tolerant, we would look at the equity market. You know, you can our dividend growth equity portfolio has growth. It has income. It has growth of income. It has those important factors uh, that most people need to uh, to make their retirement nest egg work for them. And then, of course, there's things like alternative investments, parts of the fixed income markets. Um, all those things are are for risk tolerant people. They all have different risks associated with them, but they can all provide returns that will get people to where they need to go. Uh, tomorrow we have the Dividend Cafe that will be in your inboxes as it always is. And happy Friday, by the way. Um, we also have non-farm payrolls out, which will be the biggest number on the day as far as the economic calendar. We're expecting 200,000 uh, jobs and we're expecting unemployment to stay about the same, which is 3.7%. So we'll see what we get. Um, it would not shock me if we got something lower than those numbers and the market actually liked it, meaning that the bad news would be good news because um, it would show employment slowing down a little bit and, and maybe that would give uh, the Fed more reason to, to go ahead and stick to that June timeline on cutting rates. But again, the number is unknown. So we'll see what we get tomorrow and go from there. With that, uh, I wish you all a lovely evening, and if I don't speak to you, a great weekend. Thank you for listening. Mm -hmm.